If we look now at the central zone of the wrist, there's a number of key features uh, that can uh, help you with the diagnosis. Lister's tubercle is a bony prominence right in the centre of the, uh, the wrist, around which EPL runs into the forearm. If you ask the patient to retropulse or to pull the thumb up, EPL runs around Lister's tubercle. Now Lister's tubercle is a very good bony landmark. Not only does it tell us where EPL is, approximately one centimetre distal to it is the interval between the scaphoid and the lunate, the scaphoid lunate interval. And patients with an acute scaphoid lunate rupture will often complain of pain and discomfort in this area. EPL ruptures uh, following distal radial fractures um, will not have this obvious EPL tendon and patients will be unable to retropulse the thumb against, uh, away, from the, away from the table. Patients with Keenbox disease also have discomfort in the central zone. The Lister's tubercle is palpated, the scaphal unit interval is one centimetre distal and then the ulna, uh, the um, lunate is just slightly ulnar to that point. So patients with Keenbox disease will often point to discomfort in this area, but also will notice a decreased wrist extension. I think it's worth noting at this stage that any decrease wrist movement, particularly extension, is a sign of a significant intraarticular pathology, either an occult fracture, an obvious fracture, or something such as Keenbox disease.